Hey y'all, welcome back. It's Erin, the Two Martini Stitcher. Um, go by that both here on YouTube and on Instagram, so you can find me both places under Two Martini Stitcher. And this is my channel about cross stitch. So I hope if you've just wandered in here that you like some cross stitch, and if you're a regular viewer, welcome back. So glad to have you back for another weekly cross stitchy update. Um, talk about cross stitch here as well as a little bit of knitting these days because that's something I've started getting into. And uh, welcome. It is Monday, the 14th. Yep, it's Monday again. You can probably tell it's Monday because I am back at the murder wall <laughs> in my downstairs and not up in my craft room. It is also kind of cool here and uh, so I have tea today and check it out this is in I'm using my mug that was in the frog warts box from black needle society um, did you guys all see that they launched their like subscription box starting next year they're gonna have like a box every two months I do this every time forget to mute my notifications Sorry about that. They are gonna do a subscription box that's like one retreat box. Every two months, you can sign up for one box, three, or the whole year for six. Um, I've just signed up for one for now, uh, but you can bet I have that January box coming. And I just signed up for one because I'm kind of hoping I can get the rest of the year as maybe a Christmas present. What do we think? Anyhow. It is Monday, I typically film on Sundays, but I might turn into a Monday recorder. We'll see, this weekend, this weekend was busy, a little bit of stressful, a little stressful, and I got a little distracted. So there wasn't a lot of stitching, and it just didn't happen on Sunday. I was playing games with the husband and having dinner with the family and other things, and it just, I was tired, I had not been sleeping well had not been sleeping well and was not, things were backing up on me a little bit this past weekend, but I finally got a good night's sleep I felt like last night. And so it's Monday, we're back on track and ready to show some stitching. Are you ready? I think we're just gonna jump right in. I did read through all the comments. Um, oh, I will say I do appreciate so many people have like commented or reached out. Um, with concerns about how we're doing with all the fires here on the west coast if you're new here i live in the seattle area um, we are very very fortunate that we are not under any um, threat from the actual fires all we have is a lot of smoke the air outside is thick 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 it's unhealthy to go out so um yeah so that's kind of what we're dealing with, but it has also cooled things off a little bit here, which is nice because it was still really hot last week. And I think that wasn't helping the fires any, um, the closest to us are about an hour away, the closest evacuation zone. So thank you so much for everybody reaching out. And yes, let's, uh, let's keep all of our stitchy friends and all the people in Oregon and California and here in Washington that are under threat of fire in our thoughts and Kind of figure out if there's something we can do to help out. I'm gonna look into that for next week. There's got to be some, some funds or something for everybody that's losing their home. But here it's just smoky, 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 and so no going outside time. <laughs> and we are still in Washington. We're still very much, um, I mean, not locked down, but where I live, we're still like phase two, which is not. Uh, our governor is very much being guided by the science of things, so our schools are all remote and um, there's still not a lot of like sports or places that you can gather, so it's been a lot of just like outside recreation, which then gets hard with the smoke, so it is what it is. We're all just surviving 2020 at this point, right? <laughs> okay, stitching. <laughs> You would think that that would have left a lot of time for inside stitching. Um, and I did do quite a bit of stitching this week, but over the weekend I got a little distracted. I'll show you what I got a little distracted with. 
but there was some good stitching progress. So the first thing, of course, I want to show is full coverage piece. And this week, I was finally back to Harry Potter book covers. Finally came back. This is the first time it's been back out since I did 100 hours on this in June and July for Velo Stitchers. And so I went back into the Q-Snap and I started back up at the top of book three. So there we go. I got a bit my grime guard kind of all turned there to keep it out of the way. So I got to start on the top of book three. And this, guys, is the edge of the book. So that's the entire width of the book there. So, I mean, I almost hate to say it, but I feel like this book could go pretty quick. <laughs> Just because it's pretty narrow, it's only it's only like 32 stitches wide. Is that right? 10, 20, 30, 34, 34 stitches wide. So I think I'll be you should be trucking. I mean, of course, that's all the progress I got in one week. Um, but it's a start. It's a start back. I, it's so good to have this back out. I did have um. Carla, Rolodex Stitches, she messaged me and was asking about, actually about Farewell to Anger, which I haven't put back in the Q-Snap yet uh, because I went to bed early last night. I didn't even touch it. But she asked me about wrangling all the fabric. So I thought I might as well talk about that a little bit. Let me flip my grime guard back around uh, on how I get all the fabric back in here. So I really, it's not pretty, but I really just kind of fold and roll all the excess fabric. So I'm at the top of the book, so most of the excess is at the bottom. So you can see, I put the Q-snap on, and then there's some excess over here that's rolled up, some there. There's not really anything at the top, because I'm up at the top. So I really kind of put the Q-snap on, then I kind of fold it all in a little bit and then I roll 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 until it's super tight I do use some of these thread huggers along the sides on the bottom you just really can't like they're it's too big the other thing is I will say use the grime guard to your advantage um, I bought this grime guard I can't remember the seller I will find it it was an Etsy seller I'll find it and link it below I can't remember but she custom made this extra deep. One, this Q-snap is an eight by 11. So I kind of Frankenstein an eight by eight and an 11 by 11, um, just because of the orientation of this pattern, I thought that would be a good size. So I, she custom made an eight by 11 for me that was extra deep. So it's a little wider, you can see, than like maybe a typical grime guard. The one that's on Farewell to Anger, I have Farewell to Anger on an 11 by 11 Q-Snap, and that grime guard is from um, Gauron Toten Bags, and I will link their Facebook group and website below. And I feel like their grime guards are already roomy enough to kind of wrangle extra fabric. So there you go, and then you can see my like messy, messy back, just how it goes with full coverage. Um, so yeah, so I hope that helps somebody. Uh, if you're interested, I can maybe, I'm gonna wrangle Farewell to Anger back into the Q-Snaps maybe this afternoon. So maybe I'll try to set up to try to record that. It won't be pretty, but if anybody's interested, you can see it's kind of trial and error. Sometimes I roll it up and it doesn't, it's not good and tight and doesn't stay well and I undo it and roll it again, but Eventually it gets all in there. So that's how I wrangle all the extra fabric. That was a bit of a tangent. Okay, what else did I work on? So last week I showed you guys like a cherry blossom. That was what I had been working on for, that was my current sampler that I was working on for Sampler September and was a new start. And I told you that I had one more day to work on it. So I was still gonna work on that um, on Monday. So this is like a cherry blossom by Stitches Through the Years. Beautiful. And so I did put a little more work in that. I also did decide to change out the um, color of that one floss that I thought was too light. Uh, let me see if I can find. 
Yes. Okay. So this calls for, well, first, let me show you where I am first. I am stitching this on a 36 count linen in seashell by X Ju Designs. Find the stitching. And this is where I got to. So I don't even know, did I do that much more? I know I think I did the middles of the flowers perhaps and maybe a little bit more over here. But when I showed you guys last week, this border here was so light and I wasn't sure that you could see it really well. And I kind of hummed and hawed about it and I looked and thought, well, maybe I just change it out because I started looking where else that color is and it's actually this entire house color. And it is one of the, this is charted in Anchor, Weeks Dye Works, General Arts, and Color and Cotton, and it's one of the Anchor flosses. They have a DMC conversion listed for all of those. So I had gone with the DMC conversion. This is a little story. So that color that is the house and that border that I thought was maybe too light called for DMC 3853. 3893. Can't read. 3893 only comes as far as I can tell in like a multi-pack in like one of those packs of like 10 or whatever. So I couldn't find it just to get a skein of that color. So I'd hit the Googles for a substitution for 3893. And what I came up with was 543. So that's what I had stitched this in. And it was just, it was disappearing. So I thought maybe there's a better conversion for that color because on the mock-up, it looks like the house looks darker, right? And so I thought, well, maybe there's a better anchor conversion. So then I looked, hit the Googles again to find out what the conversion was for the called for anchor. And that came up as 842. So you can see 842 is quite a bit darker than 543. So I think it was a bad conversion by me the first time for that DMC that's not available open stock. And so I switched to 842 and I think I'm gonna be much happier with that. So I did frog out this border and replace it with the 842. So I'm gonna get you nice and close so you can see that much better. And I think in the house color, it's gonna be okay. I think, you know, cause there's darker windows and roofs and it's gonna be a big block of it, but I think that 842 is a better color. So there we go. Cause I, quite a few people said, mm, maybe not. And a lot of people said, it's fine, keep going. I just decided to see if there was a better conversion and that's what I decided to go with, so. Now I think it's gonna be great, it's lovely. I worked one more day on it. That is like a cherry blossom. So pretty, and I do love the fabric. I love the fabric color. I think it's just perfect for this pretty, pretty delicate sampler. So that was like a cherry blossom. So I did a little frogging, a little restitching, and I may have gotten a little further on it than what I showed you last week, but I can't remember. I can't remember and I didn't go back and look. So there we go. For all of you who weighed in on the floss of that fabric, that's where I landed. I did switch it up a little bit, a little bit. Where am I gonna put things? On the floor. That's where they're going. That's why they're all in project bags, right? Okay, so that was Monday. On Tuesday, it was a start timber start. And I was so excited to start Quaker Genetics. This is a stitch along. Um, Megan Frozen Crafter brought this pattern to my attention. I had not even seen it before. Don't know how I hadn't seen it before. And said, hey, have you seen this? We should stitch it. Mm, yes, yes, we should. So this is the hashtag 16 peas in a pod sal. If you have this pattern or want to get it and join us, that's the... That's the stitch along, start along, and 
I'm already obsessed. <laughs> I'm already obsessed. I stitched on this a lot that day and got the entire first genotype done. <laughs> so this is um, dominant on both uh, alleles and in Tracy's ink circles world, that's what it would look like. I love it. And I of course had to get my, uh, this needle minder I made from a pin. Um, when we can go to Disney, we love to collect pins and trade pins. And I had this one and thought it would make a perfect needle minder. So I cut the pin off of it and made it a needle minder. And it's the perfect needle minder for this, for this uh, stitch along. So this is on 36 count um, linen from Be Stitch Me in Coffee Club. And don't you guys think, isn't this going to look great hanging up in here? Yeah, so you know, maybe when I finish it in a couple years. So this is Coffee Club 36 Count Linen by Be Stitch Me, perfect. And I'm using called for ish colors. So it calls for cherry bark and espresso bean. So I am using cherry bark and espresso bean. And then it also calls for buttermilk. Uh, and I'm using color and cotton cardamom. And then these little doodly dads in between are in uh, called for an Otter Creek. And I'm going to use this color and cotton Spanish moss since it's peas in a pod cell. I thought I'd go with a little green, little pop of green. So that looks fantastic. Uh, that was a super fun motif to stitch, which is good because I'm going to stitch it a bunch more times. So I don't know, like if I do one a month, I mean, it'd take me more than a year, but that's okay. Uh, but super fun, super fun. I say it all the time. Tracy Horner is a genius. I want to stitch all of the ink circles. So I am not on her Patreon yet, but I think that's gonna happen. I think that's gonna happen because I just love everything she designs. I want to stitch it all. Okay. So that was the start on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I got to spin my sampler September wheel to see which sampler was gonna come up next and get three days worth of work. And I was super excited. It was another Ink Circles Dog's Declaration. So Dog's Declaration was the next spin of the wheel. And I worked on this on Wednesday and Thursday. So this gets one more day today but I had other things you'll see I had other things slotted in for the rest of the weekend so um, this got two days worth of work and then I'll work on it again this evening so dogs declaration love it I am stitching this on a 36 count linen in bisque by lakeside I'm pretty sure it's a lakeside linen I scored this like enormous this has to be a half yard uh, piece on stash unload last year before I even knew like what a find it was to find this big of a piece of lakeside linen and then it was just perfect when I bought this chart and a uh, gloss pack so because it's big so here we are dogs declaration so in the two days I worked on it I put the F in this little bird um, I think I did a few more of these little acorn squirrels. <laughs> I did these two little squirrels. How, I mean, how adorable are they? Someone on Instagram said they look like they're ready to rumble. I don't know whether they're fighting over that acorn. Maybe it's really heavy. I think it's really heavy and they're cooperating getting it back to their tree. That's my thing. But my favorite is this little dog. You die. Okay, let's look at him on the pattern. So this is how he looks on the pattern. He's the first little dog I've gotten to stitch and he looks the most like our dog happy. So I had to convert him and make him our happy dog. So I curl up the tail because our little happy has a curled tail and I did one ear up, one ear down, made him black with a white chest and I shortened his legs 
because our guy's like, I don't know, we think he's part corgi, but he's he's a short, he's a low rider. He's a little low rider guy. So that's our happy. Um, and I, this is just, I love this piece and I'm excited I get to stitch it today because yesterday was our happy boy's gotcha day. We've had him for a year. We adopted him a year ago and I, it does not feel like a year. That year went super fast. So it's just perfect that I got to stitch on dog's declaration right around his gotcha day. And um, yeah, I will, I'll stick a picture of him in right here. So there he is. Didn't I do a good job? I mean, he, this is so cute. Uh, Becca thinks I should turn all of the dogs on there into happy. I think that's more happy than I need. <laughs> and there's a lot of other really cute little dogs in there. But that was the first one that I stitched. So it seemed just right that it should be him. So this will get a little more work this evening. Um, I would like to, if I get this, like if I could get that whole thing done, oh, it's probably, that's probably a stretch. Then that, if that medallion's done, that's pretty much a page finish. I mean, almost. So, cause the page is like, there's a little, like the start of this flower, the very top of this flower is on that page and like part of the E. But if I do this one, then I'm gonna pretty much call it a page finish cause then I'm gonna start working my way down the left hand side. So. Maybe I'll put the whole E in so I have all of life. We'll see. We'll see what I get to, but you guys will see that next week because I'm going to do another day's work, worth of work on that today. So that got two days. And then um, on Thursday, I was doing some text banking. Well, first, I started kidding up some more smalls, just like one or two because I was feeling like I wanted to fit in a couple more small starts this month. And while I was going through some of the like little small things that I've pulled out to start, I came across this. How have I not stitched this yet? I clearly had it printed and ready to go. It's also by Ink Circles. Apparently it's Ink Circles, Tracy Horner fan day around here every day. Every day is a Tracy Horner fan day. This is a freebie. That's why I'm fine showing you a chart. I will link it below. So this is a freebie chart. I voted. Um, I've been very busy doing a lot of text banking, helping people make their plan to vote um, in the upcoming election. We have like 50 days. 50 days. Have you made your plan to vote yet? Have you figured out how you're voting? Link below. It will give you all the information. For every single state, mail-in voting, early voting, make a plan. So, being that in Washington, we're all mail-in voting. Have been for years and years and years. If you're registered, you get a ballot in your mail, you sit at your kitchen table with your voter's pamphlet, fill it out, drop it back off. I have always dropped it off at a drop box, but you can stick it in the mail doesn't even require postage. Um, that means that we don't get an I voted sticker. And I kind of, I always loved getting the I voted stickers, but you can stitch one now. So I thought this would be, I mean, it's tiny. It's 26 by 20. It's tiny. And so I thought, oh, while I'm sitting text banking, because sometimes you have to wait a moment for replies to start coming back in, I thought I could probably stitch this up. So I pulled a little scrap piece of 18 count Ada and over a couple days of text banking I got my little I voted so that was a start and a finish but isn't that gonna be perfect so there we go I voted I used this Mrs. Seda silk it's number 58 for the blue I just pulled stuff for my stash and I use color and cotton Bing cherry for the red that's all you need and I did do two strands on this 18 count because I wanted it to be like nice and full and bright color. So I voted. I need to finish this up. I think I'm going to just put some felt on the back and probably even a safety pin and just pin it on. 
that's probably going to be my plan. Felt on the back and a safety pin. And I will have a little I Voted sticker, but isn't that cute? So fun. I will link to the free chart down below. There we go. So a start and a finish. <laughs> Seriously, it's so tiny, guys. It's so tiny, but I'll take any little $2 finish I can get for Stitch from Stash. I did buy a few things this week. They haven't come in yet, but did I buy? Oh, well, <laughs> I ordered that January Stitch Box. How does that work? Do I have to claim that now? Because it doesn't come until January, but I probably have to claim that now, huh? And then I don't have to claim it in January when it shows up? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so that was that. And then on Friday, I had another new start for start timber, and I started Shepherd's Bush uh, Scatter Pumpkins. So, and you guys all probably remember when I showed the fabric, I was dyeing this um, for this. It calls for a 19 count cork linen and you've stitched three strands over two. I don't have 19 count cork linen, but I did have a whole bunch of 11 count Ada. So I decided close enough, hopefully the buttons still fit. I dyed this myself with some Rit dye, some like green and taupe Rit dye, and then decided it needed a coffee tea bath afterwards, but this is where I got to. So, um, I am stitching this with three strands on the 11 count, which gives really nice coverage, but man, does this sucker, these things eat floss. Uh, but how can I even say that I did not spend that long on Friday doing this? So I feel like this will stitch up super fast. <laughs> that, that will probably be on my tombstone. That should be on my tombstone. Erin, she thought everything would stitch up super fast. <laughs> Uh, I think it will though and I am using like called for sort of colors there's a DMC conversion for everything so a couple things I'm using called for like I know the colonial copper is called for um, this is the list of DMC but some of it is just what I picked from my stash that I thought would be close so I will list all of those down below um, the words call for um, Crescent Colorworks. Crescent Colorworks, Wisconsin Woods. I am using this Color and Cotton Caramel Brownie. Um, and then I think that's Colonial Copper. That's Fragrant Cloves, maybe. This is Forest Glade. So there we go. And I don't know. These pumpkins are maybe not giant-ass pumpkins, but... Maybe. I think they might be big enough. Uh, Michelle Bendy, Michelle G, and Zakia, Lady Wing Designs, are doing a stitch along giant ass pumpkin sow. So, I mean, those aren't, they're pretty big. I mean, it's 11 count, so they're pretty big. <laughs> I think I might count them, and there's a few more on there. So, that's Scatter Pumpkins. And, you know, hopefully I'll finish that up-ish pretty quick. And then uh, Saturday, I was supposed to work on Crosses of the Kingdom, which I didn't even bring over here because I didn't. I hardly stitched it all on Saturday. Um, I got a little distracted. I was a little stressed out on Saturday. I did a little bit of work on Harry Potter and that's it. I just was not feeling Crosses of the Kingdom. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, I still have it sitting over by my stitchy spot. So I kind of thought like if I felt like picking it up this week, I might pick it up and put a little work on it this week. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, it'll be fine. Then it'll just, it'll happen. It'll come out next month. So... The only other thing I worked on a little bit here and there is the um, current release of Enjoy the Sunshine Mystery Stitch Along by Tempting Tangles. 
I don't have it all done yet, but I am getting closer. And here is where I am on that. So look, does this not make you guys feel like Mardi Gras? Like this seems like total Mardi Gras colors to me. I love it. This is the sun, which I haven't finished stitching, but I did this, got more of this done. Um, I'm closing in on finishing out this piece, which is good because the next part drops on Thursday. So I really want to have this finished up by Thursday because I want to stay current on this one. Um, and there's not much more to do. So this is enjoy the sunshine. And I am stitching in on a 28 count linen in lemon by Be Stitch Me. It's charted in all dinky dyes, but I am using these Mrs. Seda silks that I picked that I thought would work instead. <laughs> They're pretty close. They're close-ish. They're maybe a little brighter, but it's summer. It's a summer pattern. Enjoy the sunshine. So yeah, they're so soft. <laughs> I'm loving stitching with the Mrs. Seda silks. So and I'll list all of those in the box below. And I told myself I did kit up another little small from the latest issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine, which I haven't gotten my hard copy yet, but I did take a little sneaky peek at the digital copy. It's good. It's real good. I've already printed like three things I want to stitch from it and kitted up one of them. But I told myself I have to be current on this before I could start that. So, um, I need to get this done before Thursday. All right, that's everything I worked on this week. Um, yeah, it. now that I look at it, just, that just doesn't feel like very much. Oh well, <laughs> I did get a little distracted and I will show you guys what I got distracted with in just a minute. Plans, what plans do I have for this coming week? So dog's declaration today, and that will be its third day of work. And then tomorrow, um, so dog's declaration today, I want to finish up enjoy the sunshine before the next part drops on Thursday. Tomorrow I get to spin the sampler September wheel again to see which sampler is going to get three days, the next three days worth of work. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whichever sampler I spin and I can tell you which ones I have left, which ones are still on the wheel. Let's look. I still have on the wheel game of swans. Seeking Refuge and And a Forest Screw. So it'll be one of those three is going to come out for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then Friday is the 18th. And so that's my anniversary date. April 18th is my anniversary. And I started Stars Bright. So I work on it on the 18th of every month. So Stars Bright will come out on Friday. And then what do I have on Saturday? Oh, and then Saturday. I'll spin the wheel again for the next sampler. So two samplers this week, Stars Bright, Farewell to Anger will be the full coverage project in rotation. Enjoy the sunshine. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be another small little start, <laughs> magazine start um, this week. It is start timber after all. So I should for sure start something this week. Oh, I forgot. There is another thing. Yesterday was a start for Start Timber. How did I forget this one? Yesterday was Dark 13. So Dark 13 stitching, Start Timber. I decided to start Fancy Blacket and the Butter Churn. How cute, I mean, how cute is that? Uh, this pattern is making a little bit of a round robin and was sent to me by my dear friend, um, Diana, it is Kismet. And I decided to stitch this on a 28, piece of 28 count raw linen. And here is my start on her. So this was what I worked on yesterday when I finally settled down to do a little stitching. Isn't she adorable? I. I'm doing her on 28 with two strands, so she's not, my version is not as prim as this one, um, which I love. 
I mean, I love how grungy and prim it is. But what I'm thinking is when I'm done with this, I think I'm gonna, like stitching and all, give it a tea coffee dye soak and kind of maybe grunge it up a little bit. Uh, and then this has it as a little hanging thing. I don't know how I'm gonna finish it because on 28, I mean, she's not big, but she's not tiny, tiny either. So, and I'm just using stuff from my stash. Like I literally had my whole bag o mess of threads and uh, I can probably tell you what some of them are. Um, so the black is cast iron skillet because I just love cast iron skillet. Her hair is something, something, something. Oh, I, don't, I think they're all still even sitting over there. It's a DMC. I think it might be the listed DMC conversion, but the brown is bramble bush. Look at that. That's an old oldie but goodie because it says classic color works. And then the butter churn is, which isn't showing up super bright here. It's not that bright. Um, is this Victorian motto harvest bounty. And then the green is, I think, forest glade. Yep, forest glade because I'm gonna use a lot of the same colors that I'm using for scatter pumpkins. So like this will be the sunflowers. Um, I think the other green leaves are gonna be, what is this, bean sprout. Um, and there's some scissors and a key that I might put in, in, I'm thinking garden gate. I think I have some garden gate that I might use for that. So, but there she is. There's Fancy Blackett at her butter turn. And this is gonna be a super fast. I would love to finish this up this week. So that's the other thing is, I think I might keep picking at this as well until it's done, because I would love to send it along its way. Um, and I think I'm gonna leave out, I think I'm gonna leave out the date and just move the key up. Um, I don't know why, but why 1763? It doesn't say in the pattern. The only thing I know 1763 is I mean, wasn't that when Britain won Canada? I mean, wasn't that the end of the, wasn't there a treaty in 1763? That's all I know. That is the, I mean, off the top of my head, if anybody else knows why this pattern says 1763, let me know. That's not a significant, that's not a significant date to me. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I should probably ask my daughter who is a history major. Matter of fact, I'll probably text her right now and she's gonna be like, why are you asking me this mom? And then she'll give me the answer. But I might just leave it off. I'm not one for random dates on cross stitch pieces. So I think I might just leave it off and move the key up or some such business. We'll see. But I'd like to finish that this week. <laughs> Where was I plans? Finishing up Fancy Blackett and then I'll probably have another little start this week, a little magazine start. So that's plans. What did I get in the mail this week? Um, got a few things in the mail. First thing I got is my Color and Cotton um, Club, from which I get from Threads and Twine. So I get five skeins of Color and Cotton floss each month from Threads and Twined. I will link her below. And these are the ones that came this month. Look at these. Uh, this one is, I don't know how to pronounce this. Chamois? That's how I say it in my head. <laughs> Chamois is what it makes me think of. Is Do you, do you guys remember the, the infomercials for like the towels and they were Chamois? <laughs> this is Chamois. But it's just a nice, like, tannish cream. And then this one is champagne. And it's, like, funny. It's got a little bit of green in it. Oh, that's kind of blowing out. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can see, but it has, like, a little tinge of green in it, almost, and pink. But it's a fun floss. And then... This one is chartreuse, which yes, yes it is. That is in fact chartreuse. 
And we have Cherry's Jubilee, which I think I might already have, but pff, that's a good color. So I'm not mad about that. That's a fantastic color, Cherry's Jubilee. Everything's showing up a little brighter. It's super dark. It's looked outside for like three days, like dusk and yellow. It's like a yellowy dusk outside. So I have my ring light on way bright. But Cherry's Jubilee. And then this is Cherry Cordial, which is fantastic. So those are my color and cotton. Love having those. I will say probably about a year ago, I didn't really understand being in thread clubs or fabric clubs. I was like, why don't I, I just buy what I need for a pattern. I'm loving having a thread and fabric stash and just being able to see a magazine chart and maybe I don't have the call for threads, but I have stuff that will match or look good or will work. I love that. So I'm a true believer now. I'm a true believer of the thread and fabric clubs and having a big stash of all the things. Okay. The other thing I ordered that came in was I got a frame that I ordered from Frame and Wire on Etsy. And this is for, I wish I had taken the time, got, had gotten it all done up, but maybe next week. This is for Suffrage Act. Suffrage Act was a strange size. It wasn't going to fit in a standard frame. I didn't have anything that would work. And so I ordered this from Frame and Wire on Etsy. And they do like custom size frames. So this is what I got. And yeah, their stamp frame and wire. It always comes with acid free foam board. Um, you can get glass. I think they typically come with glass. I messaged the seller told her what size I needed because they have standard sizes that you can order just you know order off the Etsy and it comes with the foam core and the glass I messaged her and told her what size I needed and she said oh order an 8 by 8 or whatever size she told me to order and they knew I didn't need the glass because I'm gonna mount the cross stitch piece right on this um, so this is I'm really happy with the construction on this. It's really nicely made. Um, I will link their Etsy shop below. I, I made the mistake and they, they totally, because the piece goes this way, they totally built it the exact way I said. Like if, given the sizes I gave them, that's how I would have made it. It should have, I should have told them the other way. No big deal, like these are screwed on. I'm just gonna take it out and put it up there and then it'll hang the other way. So no big deal, and that was on me, because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, so I just need to get this all like uh, laced and in here, and then Suffragec is gonna be ready to hang. This was not cheap, 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 but it was not, it, also I, I'm not positive, but I think this was like $52 to have this custom size made, um, which, is not like you know off the shelf custom like standard size frame you know you probably get for like twenty dollars or if you can get one at you know your thrift shop super cheap but it's also not nearly as expensive as custom framing it so I was pretty happy with that and it's really pretty and I think Suffrage Act is gonna look awesome in there so that was from frame and wire so that came in um the next thing that I got is actually some Stitchy Kindness, and this is from my friend Alicia, who is Resist Stitch on Instagram, and was the organizer of Velo Stitchers. So she works for the Cleveland Clinic, and she was the one who put that team together, and she sent, uh, she sent me a little thank you for being one of the people that uh, captained, kind of captained and got on board and yay Ron promoted it. So she sent Blackbird Designs, We Live in Hope. And I love this chart and I had not bought it yet. It, I love, I love the We Live in Hope. Um, and then you'll see, I of course immediately wanted to kit this up and stitch it. Alicia it did a Dinky Dyes conversion and it looks pretty killer. Um, this is the 
original sampler that they used as inspiration. And on this one, it says, be just and fear not. And so they did this one that says, we live in hope. And then this one's also in there that says, be just and fear not. So I think my plan is instead of where it says Chesapeake Bay, I'm going to put in here, I'm going to chart it to with the be just and fear not. Um, I, of course, wanted to pick this up and start it right away. But now I'm thinking that it would be the perfect piece to start and do 100 hours on next year for Vela Stitchers because I'm hoping that that will be a thing again next year. So I love it. Thank you so much. I know I've already messaged you, but thank you. Thank you, Alicia. I love it. And um, Blackbird, you just can't go wrong. Your stuff is good. Stuff is good. So that was some stitchy kindness. And then the last little piece of haul I have is yarn knitting. So I, cause I finished the bandana and I really enjoyed it. And I've kind of missed having something to stitch on or to knit like a little bit here and there this week. So it's definitely time for another project. I had already ordered yarn and my yarn came in. So now I'm just waiting. I think it should be coming today, I hope. I have ordered a Swift and Ball Winder so I don't get into another kitten tangle. Uh, but this is the yarn that I ordered. It is from a um, small, it came all packaged all pretty. It comes from a small dyer in Austin, Texas. And I found out about them from Annie, Joyfield Stitcher. We were chatting one day on Messenger about yarn advent boxes, and she had showed me the one that she bought, ordered from Treehouse Knits. So of course I went and looked, and this yarn is one of their best sellers. The name is Seattle. It is beautiful. How could I not? Oh, look how gorgeous that is. So this came. It feels really nice. So this is a fingering weight, 75-25, 75% merino, 25% nylon, um, in the colorway, Seattle. And now I just want to knit every single thing in this yarn. Everything. Everything. I want to wear this every day as a sweater or a hat or a scarf or a cowl or something because it is too perfect. So that came, I love it. And I already know what I'm gonna be stitching with it. I finally decided I am going to be doing, of course, here's yard work, but we're almost done, so it's fine. I'm going to be doing this. This is one of the hitchhikers. So when I asked what I should stitch next, so many people said the hitchhiker scarf. And I know Michelle just finished stitching one and, um, any Joyful Stitcher is stitching one. It does look like a fantastic project. So I went, looked up Hitchhiker, and there's a book of four different variations of the Hitchhiker. So this is the one that grabbed my heart that I'm going to do. It's the Lintilla. It's got a little ruffle. I was a little worried that this might be above my knitting pay grade. But um, I figured... Cast on, knit and purl, got that. Increasing um, knitting into the front and back. Knit front back, I can do that. Short rows with wraps and turns. That's where I was a little worried. But I did some practicing with the little bit of yarn I had left from the Empower People bandana. And I think I finally got it. I watched a bunch of videos and I practiced the first few times they came out a little wonky, but I got better and better. And so now this is just my little doodle practice, but I think I got it. Like there's my short rows and that looks right. Yes, that doesn't look weird. I think I have the wrap and turn down. So this is DK weight on bigger needles than what it calls for, but I have needles coming and a swift and ball winder. And as soon as they are here, I am going to hopefully successfully wind this skein of yarn without getting myself into a mess. Um, so this is what I got a little distracted with because I thought, okay, well, let me see 
if I can figure out these short row wrap and turn business. And so I cast it on. I did one section of wrap and turn that was not right at all. And then I did a second section that looked pretty good. And then I did a third that I thought, oh, I think I've got it. Um, and then I tore it all out and started again and tried again. When I get in my head that I want to learn something, I get a little laser focused. So, but I think I have it. I think I have it. I'm so excited to start this project because look how pretty. I mean, am I wrong? Is this, I think this is going to be so pretty. I think it's going to be so pretty. I can't wait. So that's the next knitting project that will hopefully be cast on this week. Wish me luck. So that's everything that came in the mail that I bought. That's all the updates. So I think the only thing left to do is giveaway. So last week I was giving away because we were right coming up on 9-11. I was giving away this Michael's prayer. And I asked you if you wanted to stitch this to say prayer. Um, I loved all the comments. I read them all. Um, yeah, it's a pretty meaningful day. So, and this comes with a little charm. I use the random comment picker and the winner is Katie Heffernan. Katie Heffernan, you won. Oh, I didn't check to make sure you filled out my Google form. Katie, I really hope you filled out my Google form. If you did not, either go fill it out or shoot me an email. And everybody, fill out the Google form. It's linked in the description box. It's one of the very first links. If you wanna enter any of my giveaways, I need you to fill out that Google form. That way I don't have to hunt down your address. I'll just have it and can send you your prize. So that was last week. Katie Heffernan, you won. Yay! And then this week, I decided to do a magazine giveaway because I'm getting a little like, not magazine obsessed, but that Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, so good. And I want to make sure that, and I also got, oh, I should probably show because this, I'm giving away a My desk is a bit of a mess. My desk, it's not a desk. This is my dining room table and it's a disaster zone. Um, so I am giving away a pattern from Just Cross Stitch. You can see like these are the things I want to stitch from it. I mean, don't even get me started on this. I mean, that's so good. Um, these are the things I want to stitch from it. And so I've been really like in my head about how do I make sure that I'm stitching the things from the magazines that I really like there is a new Facebook group. I know Carolyn Zook is one of the like founders, admins of it. And it's a, what's the name of it? Monthly Magazine Challenge? Something like that. Hold on, let me find it. I'm gonna find it and I will link it below um, because it is, it's really great. Oh, Magazine Monthly Challenge. That's the name of the group. Magazine Monthly Challenge. And they have a theme each month as well as an acrostic. And the idea is to stitch those magazines. Because um, there are some really, really great patterns in there. And so I've joined. Um, go check it out. I think it's a really fun way to get us stitching for magazines. And so I pulled out... A pattern from so this is from uh, the October just cross stitch and I pulled out this pattern because I love it I love it I'm not gonna stitch it I love it there's not enough time in the day but somebody who will stitch it needs this pattern it is the fall bouquet by Arlene Cohen works by ABC look how pretty like she has it on a table runner which is really pretty um, but that's gorgeous. So pretty. So this is this week's giveaway. Um, I am going to trifold this and put it into an envelope. So if you don't want to get a pattern that has been folded like that, don't enter. But that is a fantastic design by Arlene Cohen and somebody else needs to own this and stitch this. Um, so if you want to have a chance to win this, then I want you to tell me I want to stitch the bouquet. Bouquet, B-O-U-Q-U-E-T. Make sure you spell it correctly, bouquet. So let me know you want to stitch the bouquet 
Make sure you fill out the Google form. Make sure you're 18 so that I can have your address. Do not say giveaway. I will delete your comment if you say giveaway because it's just it's a word that trolls look for and then they come in and try to win things. And I, I want a stitcher who is, you know, it'd be nice if you were a subscriber. That'd be lovely. But that's going to be the giveaway for this week. So just let me know you want to stitch the bouquet and I will pick a winner next week. I would say Sunday, but I don't know. I might end up moving to Mondays with the girls back in school now with um, Sarah moved out, the girls back in school. Um, I kind of like having that Sunday to spend with family and it's easier now. It's a little quieter around the house uh, than it had been. And so I might move to Mondays. We'll see. I'll be back sometime in the next week. I'll be back either Monday or Tuesday of next week because it takes me a little while to upload the videos. I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves and doing things that bring you some peace and calm and also making sure that um, you have your plan to vote if you're in the U.S. So that's all I have for you guys. I will be back next week. And until then, cheers.